You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. If some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon today, and coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of In Case of Emergency, Wes's Path. So y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go! Except instead of baking more bread, the loaves have been around the castle humping each other, and graphically give birth to little rolls by opening in half like a hot dog bun. That was a joke! It wasn't supposed to be serious! The place smelled like yeast for a week. Despite Wes's projected disapproval, there's a hint of exasperated fondness in his voice. This is an old conversation. Can we please take this seriously? This isn't a game. I am taking this seriously. You just said- <sighs> Never mind. You said you were joking. I thought you just said you weren't being serious. Uh, yeah, well, with the bread. Uh, this is different, obviously. Luke sighs in exaggerated exasperation. Cedric nods at you in appreciation. Wes shoots you a sympathetic look before tucking into before tucking into his meal. So, Wesley, tell us more about how your training fares. It's going well. At this point, I think I'm teaching the castle guard more than I'm learning from them. I think someone broke their jaw running into my shield. Training facilities are excellent. I used them yesterday, and I was really impressed with the integrity of the leather training dummies. Thank you for those improvements. Remus nods thoughtfully. Oh, yeah, the dummies are great. I like to cuddle with them sometimes just to feel someone's arms around me. What the fuck? Luke, I'm quite sure there are people you can pay in town. <laughs> no, I've been really hitting it off with this one dummy, and I don't mean to kiss and tell, but I think we're gonna get to third base soon. Luke, what the fuck are you doing with the dummies? The quality is really excellent. Restocking on training weapons has also been helpful, and... Cedric either doesn't realize what Luke wants, or he's deliberately ignoring him to frustrate him. Cedric was never the confrontational type. What do you think, Kieran? Of the training facilities? Uh... Good question. You didn't expect anyone to ask. I was distracted watching you. I'm not sure. I didn't get a good look. I was, uh, distracted. Luke, Luke makes a silent gagging motion across the table. It's the best we could do with the end of the world and so forth. It's a good thing you arrive sooner rather than later. Is the void spreading? The void is always spreading. It finally reached Prime Haven today. Not to mention the castle. Are the people okay? I should check on them out. No one was hurt, thankfully. Though I imagine if we don't move quickly, there may not be much left to save. I can head, to, I can head down to the town tomorrow with the Loyal Guard and, eva and lead evacuation efforts. I'll make sure everyone knows that the Crown is behind them and... Luke rolls his eyes. West gently elbows him and frowns, shaking his head. What? I'm not, I'm not interrupting. Is there a problem? No, keep going. This is important. We need someone to keep public opinion in check. A king is legitimized by the opinion of the people. We can win the battle, but if we lose the war... Does this really matter? Don't you care? You're a champion, and you treat all this like some kind of joke. Me? I'm the one who cares about maximizing our chances of winning. You're the one treating this like some weird role-playing fantasy game. Are you being serious right now? Cedric's, Cedric's lips start to curl back into a snarl. Luke tries to affect his interest, but the hairs of his mane puff out in anxiety. The scene is uncomfortably reminiscent of your childhood dinner table. It's like, y'all, water time. Hmm. Alrighty. Remus, for his part, appears to be genuinely disinterested in the tableau as he watches passively with wine glass in hand. Desert anyone? Cedric self-consciously closes his mouth with an audible click, nose twitching in frustration. Luke sheathes his claws and then flexes them like he intended for them to come out all along. Wes gives you an, ap gives you an apologetic look as he begins to fold the cloth napkin in his lap. I think I left my stove on. I should get going. I just remembered something I have to take care of. Do I leave the same way I came in, or...? Let me show you out. Wes guides you out... Uh, out of an uncomfortably silent dining room, the only sound the shuffling of his chair against the carpet. Wes readily navigates the many halls of the castle, wordlessly pointing at the direction the two, the two of you should take. The torches on the wall flicker ominously in their metal sconces. So... Uh, how are you doing? Heh. <laughs> what did you... Uh, what did you think the dessert was? I heard someone say it was peach cobbler. They don't have ice cream here, but it's still pretty good. Damn, maybe we should go back. You can go back on your own. If you make it out alive, bring me some too. Do you think it's worth it? Depends. Is a good dessert worth your life? You reflect on this. Your life? Yes. Your pride? Probably not. 
I guess not. Hey, if we save the world, you can eat as much as you want afterwards. I'll even take you out to sample all the bakeries in town. Yes, please. I can't wait to stuff my face with pie. It's not long before you reach the same door you entered through. From this side, it looks remarkably ordinary. A carved wooden door with an iron handle. No flickering exit sign over it. I can come back if I leave, right? Yeah, of course. Same way you came in. This place is bound to you now. Whoa, that's intense, but it's also kind of neat. Cool. We'll, uh, see you around? You try to fly- you try to flash him a friendly smile. Wes holds the door open for you. After you. A cool gust of basement air blows in your face, ruffling your fur. It's hard to make out much in the darkness. How many flights of stairs are you gonna have to climb to back up? Your foot hovers over the threshold. Hey, actually... Oh. Before you can comprehend what's happened, your foot your footing touches the other side. as a lurching sensation in your stomach. You close your eyes on instinct. Something far, far behind you calls after you. Did anyone tell you about? Your eyes snap open. You're in your boxers, on the bed in your on the bed in your summer dorm. The lights are off, and the only illumination is your in your dark room is your laptop screen. The place smells like instant noodles. Oh no. This can't be a this can't be some all dream bullshit. You need to go back. You need to be in the world where you have a war have have a swor a sword 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 a sword and get to save the world. You can't live like this. Not after you've had a taste of what could have been. Deep breaths. In on four, out on seven. Calm down, nerd. Get a hold of yourself. Wait, do we have proof that was all that was all just a dream? Where the hell have you guys been? You're making yourselves pretty scarce. We're always with you. Check out your body. If that was fake, then why do you feel sore? More like, check out those bodies on your laptop. Look at that hot stud. Loaded on your laptop's browser is a porn streaming site. There's a pause video of nude, oiled up Adonises. A, a, Adonai? No, the pearl eye suffix replaces words that end in us. Wrestling each other on the floor. It's like people have just started grabbing each other's dicks. Oh god. You know, that's a lot of free pornography streaming sites are pretty unethical. Yeah, you know, a lot of free pornography streaming sites are pretty unethical, right? We've already come this far. Where is the penis? Where is the penis? It's like an yell. <laughs> Sorry, my partner was looking at me like I was an insane person, screaming random things. All right, we're gonna be nice and close the tabs because we're good. Because we're good little Christian boys. You close the browser tab. Another explicit video takes its place, just as scandalous as the last. You close that tab, and the next, and the next. Naked sculpted bodies, and yeah, I'm not saying that. And massive copies of Diablo 4 flash past your eyes with decreasing comprehensibility. Hot studs and. Big roosters and college boys flicker into existence for brief moments before disappearing. <laughs> God, how many of these videos did you have open? Looks like you stopped watching halfway through most of them. Wait, wait, wait. Go back to that one. I saw something good in the recommended section. Look, oh, Jesus Christ. I am getting past that before my video gets flagged. <laughs> That's literally just a bunch of random words strung together. It's the algorithm using keywords in your username to predict what you're into. That's crazy. Can you imagine if your choices and clicks could be quantified made into abstract representations of your desires and personhood, shaping the suggestions you would see in the future? Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy! That seems like a recipe for misrepresentation. It's probably not a good idea to reduce people to the choices they make as consumers. You're more than whatever category this website tells you you are. You contain multitudes. Your adventure retracing the, circuit the circuitous path of your horny brain is interrupted by a notification from your phone. It's a message from your sister. No, don't be a child. Usually you deserve messages like this, but you're not sure what you've done most recently to warrant it. Why would she send this out of the blue? Picking up your phone, you scroll through your message history. Apparently you've been texting for the past half hour. You don't remember any of this. There's a discussion about her upcoming wedding. Your summer class, nothing about magical basement worlds. The last message was sent... Oh you sent was about ha was about having half queso, half chocolate fountains at each table at the re at the reception. That way people could mix and match sweet and salty at their very own their very own seats. That's a great idea. You stand by your idea. That would be cool. You'd have to watch out for cross contamination, but maybe that risk would make the whole thing sexier. Of course, none of this is relevant to the fact that you don't actually remember having this conversation. Pretend nothing's wrong. 
Sorry, forget it. How's the wedding coming along? Playing the reception sounds like a lot of work. It is. There's an awkward moment of silence where neither of you type. You're not sure if you should attempt to stretch out the conversation or wait for a response. Can I count on you to deal with the catering? Rick is turning into a real groomzilla, so I'm trying to get him to trying to get him to delegate. No fountains of any kind, please. And no shellfish. Make sure there are vegetarian options. Hip, but not extravagant. People should know that we have money, but not think that we're showing off. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay. Don't set the delivery time too early. The food will get dry. Your phone rings with another notification. You've been added to another chat. Okay, I've got to go. You see that she's typing a reply. Still typing. Impatient, you swipe to the new chat. Hey, you okay? Did anyone warn you about going back? Oops. When you go back out the door, you wake up wherever your body is. Your body keeps doing stuff while you're in Peregrine. You don't remember the stuff you were doing, so be careful. You don't want to return in the middle of chopping vegetables or walking a tightrope. It's usually safer to head back at night. Gives you, ins gives you insomnia, though. Your heart races. So everything you'd experienced that afternoon was real. You haven't been texting in your s you haven't been texting in your sleep. You are special. That would explain me waking up in my bed. I'm okay, just confused. That's good. Just making sure you didn't die. See you tomorrow. And then the text thread abruptly dies. You should text someone. Let's text Wes. I'd rather die than text someone first. Second y'all. Water time. Oh, last three minutes, let's make them count. Hey. Hey. Uh, are you busy tonight? No. Are you? Hell yes. Well, no, you aren't busy. If things go well, you're about to be. I'm not busy. Want to chill at my place? That might be code for something. You hope it's code for something. Sure. Uh, where do you live? Wes sends you his address. It's not unexpectedly one of the fancy apartment complexes town. A silent ride shared later, eyes never having left your phone, you arrive at front steps of a lavish apartment tower. Jesus, that is nice. Oh, shit, that looks surprisingly like, um... Okay, that looks surprisingly like the, uh, like one of the levels of the airport in, uh, the San Francisco airport. Like, almost exactly like these little kiosks right here, um, that little glass fireplace, um, the weird giant L-shaped thing. Um, there's like bathrooms over here, there's exit sign over there. I think this might actually just be a screenshot from the, from the, uh, Los, from the Los Angeles airport. Oh, sh oh, not, not Los Angeles, San Francisco airport, yeah. That's crazy. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of pictures of it online, it's a pretty famous airport. Anyway, a wave of cold air conditioning blows over you as you enter. A well-dressed concierge nods to you. The name of the complex, Park Gardens Villa, emblazoned at all caps, serif on, front of, uh, serif font on the wall behind him. Holy crap, this place is practically a hotel. Four black steel elevator doors will wait your approach. You feel underdressed, like you've shown up to an important interview in a shirt and jeans. Um, are there supposed to be elevator buttons here? Are you a guest, sir? Yeah, I've, I'm here to see my friend, Wes. Is he even your friend? You're not sure, but he didn't invite you over. Very good, Mr. Kieran. You're not used to being called being a mister. Will there be others joining you? I don't think so. The concierge seems to sag with relief before remembering that hospitality workers aren't supposed to express real emotions. When the elevator finally arrives, you step into a tiled floor with a cream and granite design. The smell of empty antiseptic heavy the smell of antiseptic heavy in the air. There are no floor buttons except for the lobby, courtyard, and lounge, each of which are spelled out on long oval buttons. The carriage begins to move as soon as you step in. Fancy. You have a chance to take in the elevator's interior as you wait. Lining the walls is a wraparound mirror that reflects your upper body back at you at a, back at you an infinite number of angles, hundreds of versions of you trapped in glass boxes. Kieran's all the way down. I look hot. Yeah. Hey there, good looking. Can I buy you a drink? You smooth your hair back and check out your body. It doesn't look all that great straight on, so you contort your pose to emphasize your shoulders and minimize your gut. Nice. Hot. Great ass. Go get him, tiger. Jesus, that is a nice apartment! Hmm. Maybe we'll have one like that one day. <laughs> the elevator door is mercifully open with a pleasant chime, depositing you in the living room with a massive penthouse apartment. Huge wall-to-wall, wall-to-floor windows reveal the twinkling night lights of the city below. 
There's a pool outside. Music softly thumps from speakers built into the walls. Wes's voice comes from above. Hey, you made it. As you step out from under the elevator doorway, you watch Wes shuffle down the stairs. His hair is mussed up and damp, like he just got out of the shower. He casually sets aside a used towel on the banister, and the smell of wet fur and sandalwood hits your nose. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.